Well, now that's somewhat concerning, isn't it? I'm Mr. Mega Man fan, and uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, you know all the things to do, but hopefully this package from Japan is, well, hopefully everything in it is intact, because you don't want to see big holes punched into the bottom of a box before you open it now, do you? But the only way to know for sure is to get this open. A lot of foam and a lot of bubble wrap, so confidence is growing as I delve into this. Yeah, I think we're looking pretty good here. Let's get a few of these bricks out, and then I will tell you all about the contents as I take each one out of its respective brick. You might be able to guess what some of them are just by looking, but I'll make it all official in due time. So, set this box to the side, and we can start working our way through the contents here. This one is a Dreamcast import which I don't think I'll be able to play on my Dreamcast because I've never had much luck with imports because I have not modded my Dreamcast in any way. I once tried to buy the import version of Cannon Spike because it was cheaper. It did not work. I was forced to buy the real thing. But this is like the web browser version 3, which I've never actually seen a US version of. I've only found web browser versions 1 and 2. Allegedly, there's a 3.0, but I have never actually seen a physical copy of it. So I went ahead and bought the Japanese version because it was literally only a buck. I kind of figure for one dollar, just for the novelty of finally having web browser 3.0, why not? But in Japan, they did not call it that. They called it Dream Passport, which makes sense because a passport is a thing that would allow you to travel. You're traveling on the internet and dream for Dreamcast. So Web Browser 3.0 just called something different. So at least one version of that actually exists. I'm sure that the North American version is real but like I said I have never once seen it so this was another one that was only a buck which just goes to show you how common certain things are in Japan compared to their US counterparts and I will explain why I got it once I get it out of the protection this is Pocket Monsters Stadium, or as you would know it better, Pokemon Stadium. But there is actually a difference here. What we got as Pokemon Stadium in North America was, I actually believe, the second game. And then the sequel was the third game. Maybe I'm wrong, I'll double check my facts on that before I release the video, but I am 100% sure that this version of Pokemon Stadium 1 is different from the one we got here. And since it was only a buck, it was another one of those, if it's only a buck, why not deals? So this is Operation Europe Sensen Path to Victory. Now, how far will I get through this without a patch? And how quickly will Ryan tell me whether there's a patch or not? I'm pretty sure Ryan is already looking for it as we speak. And thank you, Ryan. I do appreciate you going the extra mile. But don't think I wouldn't look for a patch if you didn't. I appreciate the help, but also, you know I would be looking for them anyway. Here's another one that I absolutely wouldn't know if I didn't have a cheat sheet here. 
This one is... Boy, can I even pronounce that? Oh. Otogorisu? Otogorisu? I'll, I'll, I'll go with Otogorisu. I... It, it was a buck. What can I say? Will I be able to play it? Who knows? This one I do not need translation for. This is Wagyu Paradise Land. This is basically Super Wagyu Land 3. And I already know there's a patch for it. I don't remember how complete the patch is. I think it's pretty complete, but... When I saw this one was available for a buck, I absolutely went out of my way to get it because it's the only Wagon Land game that I didn't already have. And they're pretty fun, even if occasionally you get stuck on some Japanese specific elements, but the patches for them keep getting better and better. So I'm not worried about it. This is one if you watch like SNES Drunk, he recommends this game very highly. So for a buck, I, you can't go wrong with it. I can't go wrong with it. He raves about this game. Hmm, that's drunk. And this one also doesn't need translation. Cross Dimension 0079. It's another Gundam game. So. Is there a patch? Is there not? It was a buck either way. I mean, that's true for all these Super Famicom games today. There were no expensive ones here. This is Exhaust Heat 2. I already had Exhaust Heat, so that was a no-brainer. This is another Gundam game, SD Gundam GX. Sensara Naga 2. Sensara... Naga 2. And this one's pretty self-evident. Dear boys. wonder if it's related to those slam dunk games because it looks like anime, manga, and basketball. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's somehow tied in. But maybe it's just all coincidental based on how it looks. Let's look at that one first. Dragon Buster. Once again, no explanation required for the name of that. Zoids. Also, no explanation required for the name of that. And... Okay, this one I will need to look up. What was it? Ah, this is another one where my pronunciation will probably fail me, but I will make a best attempt. Kiretsu Dayaka? Kiretsu Dayaka? So we'll see if I can find a patch for that, or if none exists, how much I can fudge my way through it it should be an interesting time and last but not least a Capcom game Higamaru you can even see it right there in very small print why they didn't make that bigger I don't know so, 8 Super Famicom games, 4 Famicom games, a Dreamcast game, an N64 game. Now, we've got 3 Game Boy games. There are 18 total, so we've got 4 more to go here. Dino Breeder? Might be obvious from the label. And this one is... Ninku. I think that's the full name, but I will double check. See if there's a longer description. Nope, just Ninku. Whatever Ninku is or does, 
That's Ninku. And this last one is Jungle Wars. I wonder if that's like Advance Wars. Maybe, maybe not. But speaking of Advance, I thought it was better looking than most of the boxes that I've seen. So I went for it. And it certainly wasn't last GameCube games that a GameCube collector would need expensive, so don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to overstate it, but it wasn't a buck, so. I'm, like, I'm trying to be careful, but there's a lot of wrapping here. It's quite a bit of work to get it all off. And of course, like I said, there's a Japan for you flower right there, covering up the label, which says Rockman Zero, the first game, the one that started the franchise. Like I said, it's not perfect. See a little bit of shelfware there. See a little bit of shelfware here, a little bit of shelfware here, but it's not torn or crushed, and it is complete, which I will show you once I get the flap open, which opened nice and smoothly, I have to say. I'm happy about that. Slide out the contents here. And then we've got Rockman Zero. Camera will focus up on that. And a warranty card. And an advertisement. The Rockman Zero manual. Let's take a look at that real quick. It's not marked up, it's not ripped up, it's got a little bit of wear from use, which shows that it was used, that somebody had it and appreciated it, so in my view that's not a bad thing. You know, there's a difference between owning stuff that's sealed and owning stuff that's been loved and if I'm going to choose between one of the two I would rather have games that have been appreciated by people that's just a philosophical view it's not a judgment on people who collect sealed unopened games I'm not above owning sealed games I have quite a few but it's not something I've intentionally sought out is what I'm saying it just has happened accidentally over the years buying things and sometimes even forgetting things that I bought that I find later and it's like oh was this a Game Boy Advance box it looks a little too big for it I might have grabbed the wrong size well I'll go look and see if I have another box on the shelf, but you've seen the video and you know what I got. So this is Mr. Mega Man fan signing out.